In this video, we're going to answer the question, are electricians' arms calibrated for torque? I don't know why, but it seems it's a contentious issue in the electrical industry, isn't it, Gordon? It certainly is, Gary, but let's just think of the bigger world, Gary. I'd like to think, yeah? Imagine this. You're off on holiday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're already the plane's revving at the end of the runway, ready to take off. There's a few nervous people on the plane next to you. You'd like to think that when Boeing built the plane, and when it's been subsequently maintained and serviced, that the people doing that followed the manufacturer's instructions, particularly with regards to the torque. So we're suggesting there the person that comes in on a Friday afternoon offers up their engineering judgment maybe for those connections of the wing to the uh, actual body of the aeroplane has made the same decision maybe as the person on a Monday morning. Yeah, or the, the guy who goes to the gym, he's not making a decision up at what point the uh, torque on the wheels is where it should be compared to the person who's possibly just started that Monday and has never seen an aeroplane before in their life. I think we can agree that torque is important and we can't necessarily pick and choose when we want that torque to actually be in place. So we started off with that question, didn't we? Are electricians' arms calibrated? And we're going to prove it in this video. And in order to do so, we had to build the rig behind us, didn't we? We certainly did. You should always check though, shouldn't you, afterwards? A tug, a tug test. It's what you call strength. Have you got a torque driver? Do they use them at college? Have they got one at college? Have you ever seen anybody with one at college? So welcome to eFix Talk the Talk, the game show where we check whether electricians' arms are in fact calibrated. What have you got on the wall behind us this week, Gary? I've got the Luden consumer unit and I've got the main double pole switch with its torque setting of 2.5 Newton meters. I've got individual RCBOs and we're doing the connections on the top side of those also at 2.5 Newton meters of torque. We've got the surge introduced, keeping up with the latest regulations, and the torque setting of that drops down to 1.5 Newton meters. And when we look at the earth and neutral bars, when we're connecting into those, it's another one, we're at two Newton meters of torque for those. Well, that's a right mixed bag of torque settings. I've got another one here. You'd think when it comes to three phase, when it comes to isolators that can switch a significant amount of current, you'd immediately think, higher levels of torque setting. But in fact, this one behind us has a torque setting of 0.8 Newton meters. Wow, is that it? In a 0.8 Newton meters for all of the connections? All the connections. Now, a lot of it comes down to how that connection has been designed. So this is cage clamp style. Some of the ones on the consumer you looked at before, traditional screw in a hole. Does that make a difference? Does it make a difference to how the terminals feel? Does it make a difference when it comes to what our contestants actually achieve in this talk, the talk challenge? And for our third electrical enclosure, we have the mystery box. Well, for the mystery box, it may be for a lot of electricians. If you're new to installing EV charge points, this easy base here has a beefy five Newton meters of torque and a hex bit. Will that confuse the contestants as it squeaks its way up to five Newton meters? Let's find out in eFix Talk the Talk. Before we meet today's contestants, if this is the first time you've heard of the term talk or you don't understand the principles of it, we've made a free CPD training package and I'll leave a link for that in the description below and I recommend you go over and check that out. So it's time to meet this week's contestants. Well, we've got a diverse bunch this week, Gary, starting with Matt and Marcus. Former college lecturers gone back out onto the tools to see if they've still got it in them. Well, will they practice what they formerly preached? Next up, we've got Richard, who's an adult retrainer. OK, so not necessarily familiar with all the practices, but should be learning the best practices whilst he's at college. And we've got young Sophie, who's a training to be an electrician at college. Okay, so our first and only female contestant in this week's challenge. From across the border in Lancashire, we've got Lewis, who is also a retained firefighter. And he would have seen in his time many electrical fires. And a frequent visitor to the channel, we've got Ross Sands from the spa town of Harrogate. Rocket Ross is often bathing in glory as he's our fastest electrician, but this time it's about precision. Has he got it in him? From across the border in Hebden Bridge, we've got Glyn. And we will hold that against him as well during the challenge. Your friend Gary from just down the road, we've got Adam. Adam, possibly the easiest of all our contestants on the old eye. Making a return. We previously saw him in the MK base rewire install. It is Will, almost the same height as you, Gary. Yeah, me being six foot four is a fraction taller than me, which is always disappointing when I meet him. We've got a young apprentice, Lewis, who currently works in the new build housing market. 
It'd be interesting to see if he's ever seen a torque screwdriver before. And rounding up this week's contestants is Graham, who has recently retired. It'd be interesting to see which edition of the Warren regulations Graham was trained to. The edition for my regulations was the 14th edition, is what I started with. Yeah, 14th edition. I found them other, other month at home, orange. So our contestants offer up a wide range of ages, abilities and experiences in the electrical industry, but what was the first thing we asked them to do? Well, in round one of Talk the Talk, we are not going to tell any of our contestants the torque settings that the equipment behind us requires. And in the case of where they may have been able to pick up a hint because it was actually printed on the front of it, we have a blank that out. So imagine that typical scenario you find on site as well. It is often difficult to find out those yeah. torque values because the manufacturer has not put it on the device or perhaps it's printed on the side of the device which is then hidden when it's installed or perhaps the original instructions have been thrown away. So we're asking the electrician to take their pre-calibrated arm and their engineering judgment in order to do up all the terminations behind us. But how are we going to validate what they got it to? Well, at no expense, or actually considerable <laughs> expense to the team here at eFix, we've bought this device from Amiga Engineering that can measure precisely the amount of torque that's been put into the screw heads. Okay, so all we need now is a set of results to see how the calibrated arm was in relationship to the torque required for those terminations. So let's take a flavoring of some of the ranges of torque. Let's start with the consumer unit. Let's start with that main switch. 2.5 newton meters of torque required by the manufacturer. What about the lowest value we got for okay, it? The lowest value was 0.78 newton meters of torque. Wow, so and the highest? And impressive. impressive. I don't know quite how this was achieved. 5.38 newton meters. Well, that is a huge range between where it needs to be. So I would suggest we didn't quite get a calibration right on that. So let's stay in there because there is a lot of them in here that require 2.5 Newton meters of torque as well being the RCBOs. So let's jump straight now to the SPD, oh, the which SPD. is 1.5 Newton meters. Our uh, low setting on that is 0.6 Newton meters. Okay, yeah. And a maximum 2.75 newton meters. Okay, so a, a lesser range, but obviously we're not correct. Let's go for the isolator. So this one's tricky, isn't it? Because it is only 0.8 newton meters, and we saw you know people going in trying to really screw these down. What have we got on our range? So the isolator, without knowing the torque settings, the low setting was 0.6 newton meters. Okay, that's good. And the maximum was an impressive 1.62 newton meters. So double the manufacturer's stated torque value there. Yeah, and it's the size of the screws that you can't actually start getting that to three or four newton meters because it's got a very small head on the screw. I'm sure one of our contestants would have loved to have got it to, uh, <laughs> to that sort of levels, Gary, but yet right, the screw prevented them in this occasion. So when it comes to the easy EV charger, it hoodwinked our contestants because when tightening that up, we had a lot of squeaking plastic and a lot of nervous tightening up of those terminations. Creaking like Gary's bones, that's terrible. But I had to get it to five newton meters of torque. How did they do? Well, there's only one contestant managed to get that, Gary. One contestant got the 4.7 newton meters, which is in the plus or minus 6% band that we would put on a torque screwdriver, but the lowest was a 1.06. Well, there's quite a lot of connections in there. Did they get them all within the range or was it just the one termination? Out of the, uh, yeah, we made them uh, tighten uh, all of them. And yet, yeah, on that occasion, only one connection was made out of 11 contestants to the required torque setting. So the conclusion from round number one, when the electrician didn't know the torque setting and went in, they got nowhere near the required setting. However, I know electricians would read the instructions, they would check the enclosure and work out from that what the torque setting is required before they calibrate their arm and they go in. And that's exactly what happens in round number two. They now know the torque setting. So if we go back to that easy EV charger, how close were we to five newton meters of torque second time round? Well, things did in fact improve, Gary. Oh, good. And obviously the contestants knew from round one they had to dig deep to get to that five newton meters. And we saw in some instances two hands appearing on the screwdriver. So our minimum this time was 2.1 newton meters. Okay, less than half it's required to torque setting. But, but an improvement and, and I'm not quite sure how we managed to achieve this because the screwdriver bit itself was only rated to 5.5 newton meters. Okay. So I was worried it was going to snap, but one contestant managed to get to a massive 7.21 newton meters of torque. Okay, so did anyone now knowing it get it correct? 
On some terminals, yes. And this was the strange thing. Right, okay. For some reason, yeah, the CPC or the Circuit Protective Conductor, yeah, actually, seven contestants managed to get that exact. Okay, the one that doesn't carry any current, they managed to get it to the required torque setting, and the ones that are carrying current were randomly around at different numbers. Not one of them achieved the correct torque okay. setting. Okay, so with that in mind, we've gone from, obviously, the big end to the little end, and we come back in now to our isolated with only the 0.8 newton meters of torque. Now, now know it, obviously going in a little bit gingerly. How close were we this time? Uh, didn't really make a huge difference. Okay. In fact, Gary, in this case, so our minimum torque setting this time went from 0.34 newton meters. Oh, wow, yeah, okay. Up to actually a maximum. I thought, at first I thought the maximum had improved as well, but looking at our results here, the maximum was 1.62 newton meters. So we had less than half in the first one, and then we had, again, double what we should be on the, on the top end. Yes, the contestant who doubled it was a different contestant this time. Okay, then WD4, did anyone get it right? On this one, out of all the terminals, actually, no. Okay, so again, the electrician knew the torque setting and still didn't get it right and none of the terminals were correct. So now returning to our consumer unit, all of the electricians that we spoke to were very familiar with that, whether they be training or whether they be contracting sparks. So how did they get on on the second time around, maybe on that main switch? Well, things did improve oh, this good. time, Gary, but we still had a minimum setting of 1.07 newton meters. Ooh, less than half required. And a maximum this time down from 5.38, now down to 3.83 newton meters. Okay, did any of them get it right? Well, in this instance, actually, four out of the 11 managed to get a torque setting within the plus or minus 6% range. Okay, so let's go now to the surge protection device in here because it does jump down to the 1.5 newton meters of torque. What was our range looking like in that one? Uh, so the range this time around went from 0.6 newton meters okay. up to a maximum of 2.53. Okay, and did anyone get it spot on? No. We posed the question at the start, are electricians' arms calibrated for torque? And we categorically proved that the answer is no. Well, perhaps you disagree with our conclusion. Put some comments below as to what you think. But perhaps you're somebody who doesn't even use a screwdriver. Perhaps you're somebody who gets to torque levels unparalleled to anywhere we've been today using an impact driver to wire up consumer units. And that's what we're going to look at in the next video.